my name is Rishikesh Rao and I will be presenting this paper on the project title Two Across on behalf of my co-author and advisor Sheila Omoran. This paper discusses a study comparing the experiences of visually impaired users solving a crossword puzzle on two systems. The first system in the image to the left is the tactile crossword represented on a full page refreshable braille display with audio announcements. The second system in the image to the right is a crossword puzzle website designed by APH accessed on a Windows computer with an NVDA screen reader. Our paper goes on to describe our observations and findings from this study and design recommendations for integrating a full page refreshable braille display with other spatial applications similar to crossword puzzle. We draw insights from two major bodies of work in this space. First being prior work on tactile representation of maps, tactile graphics, and e-readers. Tactile graphics are diagrams created by raised line surfaces that can be read by feeling them. Previous projects in this space demonstrate the use of non-visual modalities of presenting spatial information in the form of electronically synthesized speech, sound, static and dynamic tactile graphics, and at time, a combination of these modalities. Many use a full page braille display when presenting dynamic tactile graphics. We draw upon some of the insights from these previous studies in the design of our non-visual representation. The second body of work we look into is on interactions performed on the full page braille displays. Despite the limited real estate available on these displays, Interactions such as scrolling using tactile scroll bars as illustrated in Pressure and colleagues' work in 2010 and the three-finger panning interactions demonstrated by Schmidt and Weber in 2009 have been proposed as ways of accommodating large amount of information on refreshable braille displays. However, these interactions have presented some inherent challenges. Interactions like panning and zooming present an additional step required to integrate new information with the existing memory after performing the operation. Announcing spatial information over audio has its limitation as assimilating large quantities of information can be demanding. This may create a bottleneck when working with a system that mostly relies on speech to convey complex information. Applications on these displays also benefit from using Braille to present text as seen in the Sudoku puzzle designed by Gutschmidt and colleagues. They presented the numbers in the Sudoku puzzle as Braille characters inside a grid on their refreshable Braille display. The design, however, may not be scalable when the text to be displayed is longer or more complex than numbers. The Braille characters have a standard size that cannot be compressed into a limited space unlike visual text that is often compressed by reducing font size. Based on the discussed work, we designed our audio tactile crossword representation, referred to as AT crossword, on a full page braille display called the graffiti. This system was part of the demonstrations at CHI 2019. Our paper and the video for the demonstration from 2019 has details about the system design and interactions. The border of the AT crossword representation is made up of pins raised at maximum height. The crossword grid is represented inside this box with pins raised at a slightly lower height than the border. As one fills in the character at the locations, the pins are further lowered. This way, we use the height of the pins to represent the status of the crossword at the location of the pin. To solve the crossword puzzle, one starts by finding the word they wish to solve on the matrix and pointing at the pin. They then query for the clue by simultaneously pressing the right arrow key for the across clues or the down arrow key for down clue. In response, the system announces clues and other textual information over speech. Poet exiled from Florence. And the blinking movement of the pin at the location of the word connects the announced information to a physical location on the screen, as you can see in this clip. We chose to use Crossword Puzzle as an example of spatial application because, number one, interactions are simple and consist of querying interaction to ask for information and editing interaction to enter this information. Second, 
one must understand the interrelation between the words that intersect to be able to accurately solve the crossword puzzle. And finally, the task is defined quite clearly and the whole game is self-contained. The aim of this study was to compare a participant's experience of solving a crossword puzzle on the audio tactile crossword representation with a crossword puzzle website that is compatible with screen reader, referred to as SR Crossword. Although the SR Crossword uses only audio for feedback as compared to the audio and tactile response from AT Crossword, it uses screen reader interactions which are more commonly used to access spatial applications. It is therefore a practical benchmark to compare AT Crossword with than other representations that use single or multiple modalities. The SR crossword also maintains the spatial layout of the crossword puzzle, as you can see in the image above, which is also the case with the AT crossword. Following were the research questions that defined our study. Number one, how well do screen reader and audio tactile systems each assist in solving a crossword puzzle? And second, how might we design accessible spatial applications for people with visual impairments that can convey the spatial properties and support interactions that use these spatial properties in their tasks? We worked with 10 participants for this user study, of which five were assigned to the AT crossword and the remaining five to the SR crossword. The eligibility criteria for this study required that our participants are legally blind and use screen readers to access information on computers. We also required that they were familiar with using a Perkins-style Braille keyboard. Participants were recruited in San Francisco and at the NFB's 2019 annual convention. They were randomly assigned to either of the groups and each study session lasted for about 60 minutes. The task involved solving the same crossword puzzle on the system that was assigned to the participant. Audio was recorded during each session and the facilitator took down observation notes. Each one-hour session consisted of a pre-test interview followed by 20 minutes of training to introduce the interactions and sometimes also explain the rules to participants who were new to crossword puzzles. We also solved a few clues with them as part of assisted solving session. The participants then solved the puzzle by themselves for the next 20 minutes during which they were encouraged to think out loud. We provided them with the solutions to the clues if they asked for it. However, we avoided correcting their mistakes to keep the experience of solving the crossword puzzle as close to real. During the tasks, participants were encouraged to try different strategies for solving the crossword puzzle, such as querying on a number of clues to find the next clue to solve, finding the words which intersect, etc. In our comparison of SR and AT crossword, we focus specifically on understanding how participants' workflow in solving the crossword puzzles are different between the two systems. The high-level strategies that participants use to solve the crossword puzzles, the roadblocks they experience in those strategies, and their workarounds used. What were some of the frustrations they had with the two systems in terms of their design? And what were some of the technical glitches encountered in the two systems? Since the graffiti is only a prototype device, we expected to encounter a few technical glitches. In our study design, we were careful about not making a direct comparison between the two systems and measuring any performance-based measures such as completion rate, number of words solved, error rates, etc. We identified the following threats in making this direct comparison. Number one, our participants who are more familiar and experienced with screen reader interactions than the interactions with the audio tactile crossword. This would mean that they had more advantage as compared to the AT crossword solvers who were working on a novel system. Second, the interactions are inherently different among the two systems and this is discussed further in the paper. This means that users perform different steps of interactions to achieve the same outcome in the two systems. For an exploratory study such as this one, the insights we gain from a qualitative comparison of experience and strategies observed in an emerging and an existing system were important. Therefore, we focus on these in our analysis. In our analysis, 
we open coded the data which consisted of interview transcript think out loud notes and observation notes we also constructed a heat map of queries overlaid on the snapshot of participants crossword these heat maps complement the qualitative data during our analysis and from it we learned that for the sr crossword participants solved clues in their order in the list this could be a result of their familiarity with the screen reader interactions involved in navigating the website this is visible in the heat map of participant number 8 as shown in the slide where you can see they solved several clues from a cross list of clues in an order therefore filling up the first three rows completely before they were asked to try a different strategy Our second observation was that the participants often used words and clues as landmarks for exploring the grid. The SR crossword's design allowed a way to accurately jump from clues in the list of clues to a corresponding location of the word in the grid and back to the list. This also meant that they did not know the exact location of the word within the grid and could access the puzzle to only answer the clue. As a result, Majority of participants demonstrated strategies that did not use the spatial structure of the crossword. An example of this is seen in the following quote from our participant number 1. When asked about their preferred strategy for solving the puzzle, they say, "I don't have a good idea what's going on in the actual crossword puzzle. For me right now, it's just me answering questions." Overall, we observed the SR crossword supported strategies that use local navigation tasks such as following list of clues, locating neighboring words and intersecting words, etc. From our participants that solved the audio tactile crossword, we learned that the tactile representation also served as a summary view to which they could refer to find intersections, partially filled words and surrounding words. They would then use this information when picking the next clue to solve in the puzzle. A quote from our participant number 9 is a great example for this. When asked about their preferred strategy for solving the puzzle, they say the strategy for me is looking, looking at what I have filled in and looking at what's around it, how many letters are there, and then looking at the clue, then finally figure out the right word and right amount of characters for it. Building on this strategy, we also observed few participants divide the puzzle into smaller regions to focus on when solving the puzzle. This is visible in participant number 4's heat map where they have solved words in the top left region of the puzzle before they were nudged to explore the rest of the puzzle and try out other strategies. The combination of audio announcements and the tactile blink complementing it was well appreciated by participants. The system would announce the characters that were entered after users had typed in their solution. The review helped them correct any mistakes made during the typing of the word. We observed many participants use this review announcements as well as the overview offered by the tactile representation to check for errors. The participants however complained about unexpected technical glitches from the graffiti. They also expressed a preference to have the characters appear in the form of braille text on the display instead of an additional step to query for each character of the word overall we observed the at system supported strategies that use high level navigation tasks such as using spatial structure of the crossword puzzle to solve the next clue and finding intersecting words we learned that the high level information from at crossword and the local navigation in the sr crossword are both useful in the unique strategies which do not necessarily overlap based on our findings we recommend the following recommendations for design of spatial applications similar to that of our crossword puzzle first spatial applications need to be designed to support both high level spatial tasks such as getting an overview of the structure of the crossword puzzle or the level of completion of the crossword puzzle as well as local tasks such as finding intersecting words or neighboring words in the grid second the designers of spatial applications should consider a user's access technology settings and shortcuts and design interactions that make use of these familiarities and expertise that users bring along with them third spatial information is directly available on the surface of tactile representation 
Applications can leverage this in combination with a large information bandwidth offered by audio modality during multimodal design of spatial applications. And finally, not all information is useful at each stage of the task. Designing interactions within the context of the tasks help prioritize the information that is most useful. We would like to thank NSF, the Smith Kettlewell Eye Research Institute, the American Printing House, and Orbit Research for their support in this project. We would also like to thank the National Federation for the Blind to allow us to conduct our study at their 2019 annual convention.